the yam daisies after three years. Two little pots and probably about six tubers and I think there's three tubers on each plant so whilst there is still a little bit of seeding going on I'm gonna I'm gonna dig them up and uh, and then I'm gonna give them a, a bake using these gathered up mountain ash branches and a tiny little barbecue. I'll bake them like a potato. First I'll give them a drenching just so they come up easier. There's still flowers weaving their ways up. It seems to take on that like a daisy really from going on. It's really hard to propagate. I've tried. These particular seeds I bought of the internet. I've been trying to propagate them here. I put every every one in, but nothing. And it's been a few weeks. Maybe there's a particular time of the year that they come up and turn all this up and see that the seeds flowing in the that water. All right. I'm gonna switch camera. Let's see what they look like. Okay, let's see how we go. Moss has grown up all right. Well, that's nothing. That's nothing. They're the size of, size of peas. Beans. Tiny little carrots. Maybe growing them in a pot is not such a great idea. Look, I don't see any predation on them. My holes, I'll give them a wash. I'm disappointed, I thought they'd be huge after three years. That's the biggest one so far. That's the size of my thumb. Yeah, it might have been a bit bigger, mate. Something white on the bottom. Something white. Oh, maybe it's bleeding white. I don't know. Some sort of white substance on the bottom. They're a little bit bigger, but by no means are they a feast from from uh, ancient. These are a couple of. I suppose if you gathered, what you do is you do exactly what you do. You gather hundreds of them up, obviously. Looks like it hit from big pot. Let's try a little pot. These were more vigorous, I'll say. Glasses. Yeah. Yeah, and easy harvest. Leaving a little bit to be desired. Oh look. Flowers are coming out. I'm having them all. Hungry man. 
I don't see the the three sort of tiered thing that they talked about. Well, that's it. I'll go back to the other camera. I'm not sure I'm getting this all perfect. So after a bit of a clean up, still a little bit of mud on them. Don't worry about that. Um, I'll, I'll cook these on the barbecue. I might have to add a little bit more food. I think I'll put a couple of lamb chops with them, which is ironic really, because the lamb or the sheep and its, and its hooves probably destroyed the very fields that this native Australian yam grew in. Compacted the soil and made it impossible for this this thing to hang on. Just, just in nooks and crannies. These ones I'll put back in. And I'll, I'll just harvest them next year, see what they look like. Very slow growing. And that's a, you have to pick a lot to feed a family. I have to pick a hell of a lot and that's just what I've got left. I'll pick out any seeds that as yet unsuccessful in actually germinating. Yam Daisy Murnong. Don't know why I thought they'd be bigger. Never tasted one, you know what? Let's have a go, let's have a taste. See what this one looks like. It's like a witchetty grub. Let's see what it tastes like. You know what? That's really nice. And that is salty. That's nice as an, on its own. That's nice just on its own, you know? Why not? That'll go well in a salad. I think heat might he might disintegrate it pretty quickly. The other thing I've noticed is that there's no, for instance, if they were carrots that I'd put in there, and they'd be drilled with little holes and misshapen. Parsnips seem to hold up okay a lot growing up here. But yeah, no, no predation. The bugs. Yeah, I'm glad I've done, glad I've grown these. They've been fun to watch. And definitely a food source. I suppose they have, there's not been selective breeding with them, like the potato or the, or in, in any um, old world crop that's just been you know, selectively bred into the copious shapes and size of today but i would definitely say these are very nice it's yeah really good i'll shut up bye i'll show you the final uh see ya bye